You know, Trixie Trotter sings a song that sounds a lot like your You Should Care. She does? Yeah, but hers is a little more carefree. That's what you get when you sing for booze hounds and gangsters. What's Kid Tannen been up to for the last two months? Didn't you hear? It was in all the papers. I've been, uh, traveling. Well, the feds were all set to arrest Tannen on tax evasion charges. Seems they've gotten Tannen's books from his accountant. I heard something about that, yeah. Well, the accountant disappeared, unsurprisingly. But the feds still thought they had a case. After all, they still had the books, right? Right. Wrong. The day before the trial, the books up and vanished right out of the court's evidence locker. No. Lots of fingers were pointed, but honestly, the whole town's so corrupt that it could have been anyone. Court clerks, cops, janitors. What's going on with you and Emmett? The last time I saw you, you seemed to be kind of interested in him. That was before I belatedly realized that his agreement to host my Stay Sober Society was a clever ruse to ferry barrels of hooch to his so-called laboratory. Sorry about that. Now his very presence fills me with an irrepressible urge to pick at his philosophical and intellectual foundations with every tool in my vocabulary. So you're not dating? Dating? Oh, the mere thought of romantic involvement with that undisciplined techno-anarchist is preposterous. Good. Welcome back, sir. Looks like Parker's still parked. I really should give these lyrics to someone who could do them justice. Hey, Trixie, look over there! Why? Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. I can turn my life around. Sure you can. You know what? I used to be a good cop. And yeah, I've had a few bad breaks. Possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car. But I'm a good man. Yeah. And all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was. And let the chips fall where they may. All right. So, now what? Now I wait. Wait for the moment to take down Kid Tannen. Restore my good name and win back the heart of Betty Lipinski. Hold that thought. I bet that moment is just around the corner. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I happen to see Arthur McFly. Tonight? Uh-huh. How is he? Where's he staying? I didn't manage to find out. If you see him again, tell him I'm looking for him, okay? I could really use his advice in regards to my... you know what. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Good news, Doc. Parker's ready to arrest Tannen, and it looks like I didn't go stag to the prom. Wonderful. What about Miss Trotter? I'm still working on her. I saw him. Who? My grandpa, on his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed, eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost the nerve to betray Tannen. Yeah? 
We've got to find your grandfather. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Mike, you're just in time. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. Almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! No! Get him out of here! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I'll go see if I can find something to help, or someone. Edna! What? So kids walking around free? Free, clear, and laughing it up in his new speakeasy. The feds want to bring a case up against him, but without those books, they've got nothing. Couldn't Kid be brought up on other charges like, say, running a speakeasy? In a perfect world, yes. But no one in town seems to care about prohibition anymore. The feds are only interested because of the lost tax revenue. You'll be happy to know that your lyrics have pushed Danny Parker back on the straight and narrow. Well, hallelujah! One poor soul saved from the fiery pit! You wouldn't happen to know anything about Trixie Trotter, would you? Kid Tannen's latest conquest? Well, she claims to be a lounge singer from Seattle, but my sources in Washington have never heard of her. I mean, honestly, Trixie Trotter, what kind of name is that? Whatever happened with that speakeasy arsonist? I was about to ask you the same question. Me? Don't play coy with me. I may not have any journalistically acceptable proof, but I know you had a hand in Carl Sagan's daring escape from the authorities. Didn't you think that Sagan was innocent? I used to, but after he escaped, Two more speakeasies were torched in Colfax and Georgetown. That's just a coincidence. Coincidence? Or is our friend Carl a serial arsonist? I'm pretty sure that Carl Sagan didn't start those fires. We'll see. One of the reasons I'm camped out so close to Tannen's new speakeasy is it gives me the chance to catch the arsonist in the act. It'd make a great story for my column. What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, 
rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Corleone. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Could Arthur be in there? It's way too dark and crowded for me to tell. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Any sign of Artie? Haven't spotted him yet. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter. Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jumped back in time six hours, creating Timeline D. Saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kit Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. 
As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Aini stuck on the ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into Tannen speakeasy to listen to her. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will, once I get Einstein down. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. Oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Edna! What? You know, you seem pretty, uh, passionate about Emmett. I mean, considering that you don't really like him at all. I'm passionate about everything, Mr. Corleone. Even my loathing. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public you safety. You know represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile You mock me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Hey boy, take a whiff of this. Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? I talked to your younger self about Frankenstein. He's really looking forward to it. Oh, I was never worried about that. I wouldn't miss that movie for the world. This whole ticket isn't about to disappear. I sort of envy me seeing it for the first time. Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? 
No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she... Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talked me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary... <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to... Come up for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Had a girl. You! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you... I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella. I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. I... Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? What happened in the alley with Arthur? I don't want to talk about it. What about your insurance policy? There ain't no insurance policy. After tonight, I'm tossing it in the furnace and burning it up. Come on, Trixie, can't you tell me what happened out there? No! Then at least give me the evidence you got on Kid. No, I made a deal with myself. As soon as tonight's set is over, the evidence goes up in smoke. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Party? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial-like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to start bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Huh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. <laughs>